The Bible is the historical account of everything. And if we want to know where we began, we need to look no further than the book of Genesis. We welcome you to this lesson of A Creation Series. What about fossils? How do they form? Do they really take millions of years? Do they prove that evolution is true? Or do they show that the Bible is true? We will discover answers to these questions and more in today's lesson of A Creation Seminar. Hi, I'm Steve Groman, and I want to welcome you to this lesson of A Creation Seminar. We're going to talk about fossilization. We're going to talk about fossils. We're going to talk about the time it takes and how they form and some just amazing, interesting uh, proofs that evolution's not true and that creation is the way things happen. The Bible says in John 17, 17, the Lord says, Thy word is truth. I've started every service with that for the last 27 years plus we've been on the road. And I like to say it at least twice each service because God's word is truth. And it doesn't just contain truth, it is truth. So whatever it says, it says for a reason. You know, one thing it says is in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. He's the one that made this place. And then it says in Genesis 7, verse number 12, that the rain was on this earth, 40 days and 40 nights. God flooded this earth. The point with those two statements right there, Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, and Genesis chapter 7, verse number 12. The, those two verses confirm that every geologic feature on earth was formed either at creation, at the time of the flood, or since the flood. There's absolutely nothing that we see, that we can touch, that we can get our hands on. There's nothing that exists that in any way was prior to that time frame. And we have some other lessons where we track back the time frame of when the creation was, and it was not all that long ago, only a few thousand years. So how do fossils form then? I thought they take millions and millions of years, people say all the time. Well, actually they can't. We have done a lot of fossil digging across the country, and we enjoy doing that. But how a fossil forms, a simplistic overview, is that you have to have an item. And let's say it's a dinosaur bone. Or let's say it's a stick, a log. The item has to be buried rapidly because it has to be cut off and hidden from uh, anything that's going to eat it. Eat it if it's, if it's something eats it away, it's not any longer around. It's gone, so it can't turn to stone. Something ate it. Or you have to have, and even wood does that because, I mean, termites get in there, ants get in there, and just it could be eaten away. But also it has to be hidden from the atmospheric conditions that will cause it to rot away quickly and dissolve away. If something rots away and it's gone, then there's nothing left to turn to stone. Whatever is turned to stone must be done within the time element that the item would decay away. Otherwise, it would be gone and there's nothing left to turn to stone. So you have to have rapid burial. It has to have moving water near it, around it, through it. It could just be a low spot where water leaches through. As the item decays away, molecule by molecule, the water is carrying the minerals that are in the water and it's, it's absorbing in the, in, from the sediment around it, and it's replacing one at a time. That is why a fossil will look exactly like what it used to be. It's just turned to stone now, that's all. Here's an example. This is, looks like a stick. It used to be, it was a piece of wood. But as you can see now, it's completely turned to stone. This thing, but it looks so precise, so pristine. It had to be done quickly or it wouldn't have been done at all. We have been on many fossil digs all over the country. We've been a few times on some fish fossil digs. And the fish fossils that, that we're at in this particular instance happen to be in Wyoming. And the, just for miles and miles and miles in all directions, there are strata layers that contain fish fossils. And we've, we've uncovered some beautiful fossils. We like to show people how to uncover fossils, how to dig fossils, how to prepare for them. We've been on opal digs. We've been on diamond digs. We've been on dinosaur bone digs. Many times we just pull off on the side of the road and find all kinds of fossilization taking place. Whenever you see a, a roadway that's been, a road that's been put down and they had to cut through a hillside, they uh, just start noticing. If you see strata layers, there's a good chance that there are fossils in those. We've done uh, all kinds of videos on showing people how to how to find them and how to be safe while you find them and then uh, demonstrate how to prepare them. We do this with homeschool meetings and, and all kinds of different venues where we show people how to, uh, how to care for their fossils, how to put them back together if they've broken. Sometimes they break and you don't want it broken, you want it back together. How to prepare them, how to seal them, how to clean them and, and on and on, how to, how to get the rough stuff out that is 
that is removable without damaging the actual fossil. It is a lot of fun and actually young ones really enjoy doing this kind of thing. We've been several places where dinosaur footprints have been discovered across this country. We like to, to, to show people the delicate nature of some fossils because it, now a bone will last a while, uh, a claw will last a while, a tooth will last a while, but very, very delicate tissues are often fossilized also. And that is a very important point. Crinoids and blastoids and very, very delicate things. How about graptolites? Graptolite and trilobite. Trilobites are amazing creatures. Trilobites have the most complex eye, they say, of any creature ever known to exist. They, they, they're amazing. They have 20,000 lenses in each of their eyes. We have some pretty good sized ones. This is not the largest by any stretch that we have and have had, but this is a pretty good sized trilobite. And then we have some very small ones also. We have dug trilobites in several locations in this country. But trilobites and graptolites. Now I want you to realize something. In the textbooks, they say that they are a good index fossil. What an index fossil is, is basically a fossil that they claim they know how old it is, and so therefore, and how they find the age of them, that's another whole topic, but they say they know how old the fossil is. Now, if they know how old the fossil is and it becomes an index fossil, that means they found enough to decide that this is when this thing lived. Whatever time frame they give it, it's called an index fossil. Now, if they find one of these kind of fossils, a new location, they will automatically assign the age that they have given to that index fossil if that index fossil is in that strata layer. They will automatically assign that age to that strata layer because that index fossil couldn't be there if that strata layer wasn't that same age. And we have many graptolite fossils in our display trays that we carry with us for our seminar. But I want you to see something rather interesting. Way back in September 1993, this article ran. Graptolites, which flourished 570 to 360 million years ago, have long been an aid to geologists. Because the creatures evolved distinct and easily identifiable shape in different millennia, geologists can often readily date rocks that contain graptolite fossils. So they say if they find a graptolite fossil, they can readily date the thing somewhere between 570 to 360 million years old, somewhere in that four to 500 million year range is what they say. Marine biologists recently found living graptolites. Now, I would have a question. If graptolites are still alive today, how can they possibly be an index fossil for hundreds of millions of years ago? See, the issue is, folks, there is no such thing as hundreds of millions of years ago. And they come up with these ideas, and then there's one, something that's thrown in the works that just, oh, oh what are we gonna do now? The evidence always will square up with what the Bible says. See, God's, God said he did something. He inspired a writer to write something, that one something. That writer wrote that something on all issues of the Bible. When you realize that fossils take burial, rapid burial, we have that mechanism. Fossils are found all over this earth. We have the mechanism of the flood that will bury everything rapidly all over this earth. And we have the time element when that flood happened around 4,400 years ago. Can't get exact, but you can certainly get close. We have the time element when everything was created. The Bible says Adam and Eve were here from the beginning of the creation. Jesus says that in, in Mark 10, 6 and Matthew 19, 4. Well, we can track when Adam and Eve were here. We did a lesson on longevity in the Bible, and it's only a few thousand years ago. So there is absolutely nothing that can be millions of years old. It cannot exist. But then how long does it take to make a fossil? It, we've all been taught it takes millions and millions of years. Well, let me give you another example. A fellow came up to me one night and brought this in to me. He said, Steve, do you want this? And I said, I said, yeah, it's petrified wood. What's the story? Him and his wife built a house. Six years went by and the wife wanted a sidewalk to connect the side of the house with the back door with the other side. So they rented a rototiller to dig the dirt up and get it loose. As the rototiller was digging the dirt loose, you know, the rototiller, big blades on it, right? It's going through there. It just hooked on some of these things and it was just pop, 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 busting them. The distance of the spacing of the blades, throwing this stuff out. This is part of one of the wooden stakes that they drove in the ground to hold the forms for the slab that they poured six years earlier. Now, it may have turned to stone in one year and laid there for five. It may have turned to stone in five years and laid there for one. But it certainly wasn't millions and millions of years. Some of the concrete still hanging on this thing. This is part of one of the stakes. I have had on many occasions, especially in a secular setting, university type setting, you know, secular college type of thing, but also just people that have come up at the meeting but the people have told me repeatedly, it's true it can happen quickly. 
They say, but it can also take millions of years. They can believe that if they want to, but it gives us the science. See, you can do it as an experiment in six years, but you can only believe it took six million. See, folks, the truth is, it doesn't matter what the topic is. We're the ones with the science on our side. We're the ones with the truth on our side. Nothing has those long time frames at all, and we have the evidence for it confirmed all over the place. We have a piece of petrified ax handle. There's a family in the northeast of the country that they had lost an ax. And several years went by, and they were digging along in the ground, and they found ax handle was sticking up out of the ground. And so he, as he pulls it up out of the ground, when it came out, where well, the ax handle went into the ax head, it was very brittle and it just fell apart. But when he picked the thing up, all the pieces up, the ax handle is starting to turn to stone about a quarter inch all the way around it. There was a lady that brought these two prunes in that turned to stone in her refrigerator. She has a hard water situation, ice makers leaking and dripping down on, the, on these prunes, drip, dripping down on everything in there, but they were hitting on these prunes. And they were completely turned to stone. She gave us two of them. She actually had six that turned to stone in her fridge. We have this bottle. Technically, it's a fossil bottle. It's, it's complete solid stone on the inside of it, and you can see the, the mouth, the neck, the shoulder of it, and it's busted up. This is the full size what the bottle was because you could see that it was actually the bottom because you could see the bottom of the bottle on this, uh, on, on this piece of on the stone that's left in there. But it's obviously broken away, but technically it's a fossil bottle. We have seen uh, fossil bottles the other way around where the stone has, is entombed. It has entombed the bottle. The fact is it happens quickly. All the things that they say takes millions and millions of years happens rapidly. We went to a cave in Pennsylvania and in the entry where they have the, the museum section where the visitor center and you pay for your tickets and such. They have a, little, a, a small museum there. They have a fossil hat on display. There have been several fossil hats that have actually been found all over this earth, even in this country. There are things called polystrate trees, trees that run through many layers of strata. Well, how can a single tree run through several layers of rock strata? The thing of it is, it verifies that all the strata and the, and the trees were laid down at the same time by the same event. Again, we have the mechanism for that. When the flood is taking place, everything is, is, is underwater. Everything is racing around. The water's racing around and around. We went into detail about the flood in, in another lesson. But all that dead stuff is being sorted out into the layers as all this is taking place. We are the ones with a mechanism to explain why the finds are what they find. We have a fossil turtle. The actual turtle is still in there. His head's still sticking out. It has to happen rapidly or the very delicate tissues cannot be preserved. We have a few fossil figs. We have a green bean bean that turned to stone in a guy's garden. He gave us the, uh, this green bean bean turned to stone in his garden in one season. Many, many examples of rapid fossilization, petrification, all of that. This lady brought this chicken egg in, turned to stone in her chicken coop. All across this earth, folks, when you see these rock layers and you look at those layers through the mindset of thy word is truth, and whatever the Bible says is true, that's what really happened. The Bible says there was a flood that covered everything on earth that lasted a little over a year. And the evidence is absolutely all over, whether it's the laying out flat layers of the strata, whether it's the washouts, whether it's the fossilizations, whether it's the rock we see now, it doesn't matter. All of that stuff was laid out rapidly. When you look out and see these rock layers that are just nice, neatly stacked, one right on top of each other, ask yourself a question next time you see them. Go driving down, down the road somewhere, maybe go to the Grand Canyon, go for a vacation somewhere, Utah, but maybe you, maybe you just see it in a textbook, maybe you see it on a documentary of some sort. Notice how all of those layers are just nice, neatly stacked on top of each other, cut off flat. They're nice, neatly stacked, one right on top of each other, Perfect. Okay, well, I would have a question. If all those layers are tens of millions of years, and you know they're tens of millions of years apart from each other and all this kind of thing, there'll be a big chunk of something that is a big section of something that is uh, perhaps hundreds of millions of years of time and all of that. What is the mechanism, according to evolution, to take everything and just wipe it off smooth? And then what is the mechanism of evolution to put some more dirt on top of that one? and have things live. And if a whole bunch of things are there, where's all the stuff? Where's all the stuff? How come those layers are always nice, just cut right off flat and smooth, another layer put right on top, and then cut right off smooth, and then another layer on top, and then smoothed off, 
another layer on top. And a lot of times, folks, these layers, they're not just the width of a picture, you know, a few hundred yards. Oftentimes, single layers travel across the entire continents. We're talking massive thing that took place here. We are the only ones that have a mechanism that can do that all over this earth. We're the only ones that have that. The Bible says there was a flood that lasted for a little over a year. All those strata layers were laid down at the time of the flood. And all the stuff that's in those layers that used to be alive on this earth were laid down at that same time. That's why some very delicate items have been found as fossils. A tooth, a claw, bone, it will last a while. But the very delicate stuff, the very delicate tissues, they rot away quickly. Or other things get in there and eat them away. For those, that delicate nature, the more delicate you see a fossil, the more delicate detail in a fossil. We have some cicada wings that you can see through cicada wings. We have all kinds of very delicate fossils. The more delicate the item is that is turned to stone, the more rapidly you know that it was actually done. This is an example of one of those things. This is petrified. You know what it is. <laughs> it looks like what it is. But yet this stuff has been found turned to stone. All kinds of animals leave this kind of stuff behind out there in the fields. But you know what? It rots away. Other things get in there and eat it away. It dissolves away. The sun bakes it away. It, it doesn't lay around for even one year, much less millions of years to slowly turn to stone. But yet this kind of thing has been found all over this earth, completely turned to stone, verifying that whatever happened, happened quickly. And we are the only ones that have that mechanism. Thank you, Steve, for that lesson. And we do want to tell everyone to go visit our website, creationseminar.net. We have 12 wonderful lessons that cover all the topics of creation. The first is, why is this important? The second lesson, Bible or billions. Third lesson, one of the most popular, Noah's big boat. Lesson four, after the flood. And lesson five, by far the most popular, misconceptions about space. Lesson six, an all-time favorite, all about dinosaurs. Lesson seven, words mean things. Lesson eight, maybe the most significant of all the 12 lessons, is Darwin's legacy. Lesson nine, rock solid proof. Lesson 10, the longest of them all, is living proof. Lesson 11, in six days. And lesson 12, questions and answers.